this is Terry with Live True, and today I have a special guest with me. Her name is Beverly Marshall. Beverly, you and I met recently, was probably two months ago now at the most. We met in Tijuana, Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> we were <laughs> both going there for some uh, medical, for dental work, you know. No, you weren't there for dental work, actually. Uh, you had done well, that in the past. Wellness care, right? We had care. a few things we were doing, and we ended yeah. up on the same shuttle. Uh, which was, I, I think, was just divine providence. I don't think that was an accident. <laughs> and we've gotten to know each other uh, through the few days that we were there. And I find you extremely fascinating. And uh, I wanted to have you on to the show, to my podcast, um, because I think you'd have a lot to offer to my audience. You are a life coach. And you've been doing yes. this for what I understand quite some time. Yes. And yeah, you're from Reno, if you don't mind me saying, right? Reno, Nevada. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you have quite a personal story. And I'm not sure how much of that you want to share. Um, I do have some bullet points I kind of wanted to go over uh, with you. But anything else extraneous that you wanted to share, you can certainly do that. So I know that you're actively doing life coaching. And that is your profession, right? Yes. And you've been doing that for quite some time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so maybe introduce, I'll just let you, I usually let my guests just introduce themselves or anything that they want to say that I haven't covered, anything you want to add to uh, who you are and what you do. Great, great. Um, yeah, so fun to meet you too. And I'm, I'm so happy to be here with you. So yes, Life Coach um, built a company around being a coach for about 20 years now, the current company. But before that, I was a kitchen table life coach. You oh, know, okay. I think it, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how to find your purpose here today. Okay. And I just think that we're always stewing and knowing some part of what is our real best talent, our superpower. Um, but it takes us a while maybe to turn it into a paid career. Yeah. And I think that's a neat thing to talk about. You can ask me anything you want. I'm super transparent. All of my story is on the on my website and it's all to be shared and um, spoke about it's, it's healed now in my life. I would say I, I can, I can say that I belong to the I've healed my story club. <laughs> and um, so I'll, I'll talk about any of that. I'm with you. I'm in the same club and um, I'm glad to know that there is one. because <laughs> I'm definitely in that club. So yeah, your story is posted. I, I that's how I know of it. Um, and um, obviously, to come through that and to, to get where you are, um, you had to go through your own progression, involvement, and finding yourself, figuring out who you are, what you stand for, and finding your purpose. And I think I, I wanted to cover the purpose um, aspect uh, because I think it's so crucial and, you know, it's, it's kind of cliche to say more now than ever, but it kind of is true that people are just aimlessly following along in life. They're being led. They are very programmed in many, in many senses. We all are to some degree. And some of those programs are, here's the kind of life that is normal. Or here's the kind of life that you should want. The white picket fence, let's say, um, or the nine to five job, uh, 2.5 kids or whatever it is now, you know, and it doesn't work for everybody. It didn't work for me. And to find out what your, per and first of all, I think, tell me if I'm wrong, tell me what you think is finding your purpose, I think is a ongoing kind of assignment. I think that it becomes yeah. clear and clear. Would you agree with that? Okay. And I think it changes and it grows if you're on track. Yeah. And I think the way we know we're on track is that it will blossom, grow, develop. It'll keep getting, it'll add more legs and arms and have more parts and more moving things that are in a forward motion. And when we're stuck and or maybe I don't want to say off track, but if we're stuck and we're going down a way that might not be for our highest, our highest purpose, that we might run into barriers. And I might get a client who's had the same job. He's had nine different jobs in one year, all in the same occupation. And I'll look at his resume and I'll hear his story. 
And I'll realize that, wow, you're not heading in the, your highest purpose or your superpower. You know, you're kind of over here. Yeah, you're a good cook, but your job is to own a restaurant and cook there. That's why those nine jobs aren't working out for you. Mm. So how can we redirect your superpower to go in a place that is for the highest good for you? So that's just a little example. That's actually one client I had some years back. And it's so funny because once we discovered that missing piece that this person couldn't see on their own, we really got him redirected in the right direction. And then the universe supported him yeah. in helping him get what he needed to go forward. Right. So, That's so key. If you're not clear on it, mm-hmm. the universe, as I just say for a, a macro term, doesn't know what to give you. Uh, yeah. It's trying to. Uh, it's it's, trying to, and it is giving you, it is giving you where you're at, at that time. Right. And that's that part where we need, we do need a little help to find our blind spots and to see the missing pieces and to hear some redirection, but we have to be willing to come to the table and, uh, and admit where we are and share Mm -hmm. our fears and share our stuck stuff. And maybe there's a piece of our story that's not healed. And maybe there's a place in ourself that we're being fearful and we're not willing to work past that. Mm -hmm. Um, And and so those are the pieces I think that life coaching does to help people. And I think it just depends on, for me, my style of life coaching is I have a, a unique depth to the way I hear people. And, and I can hear anything. Anything you have to say, you can say at my table because there's nothing I haven't already experienced really in my own it's life. True. I would be afraid to hear. <laughs> so you lived with a serial killer? Oh, no problem. So did I. So That's you lost true, all your family? Okay. Yeah. I can work with that. And I think there's something about how your personal life helps you to have that part of your mind and heart open so that that information can land there and it's not a surprise. And so I think we're, we're also constantly, what do I, how do I want to say this? Earning our way into our higher purpose by how we are experiencing the story of our life. Mm. And I think that that it's like a, um, a natural master's degree that is always going on as we move forward. You know, and I don't think all people want to grow um, into a higher place with their careers and their purposes as much as some others. Some people mm-hmm. might not be meant to, you know, like the the guy at the DMV that has been there for 25 years and he's always the one that makes really makes it easy for you to get your car registered. And I think his purpose is to stay there, stay grounded, be the light at the DMV. And he might be okay with that. He's not out looking for a life coach. But then I think there's others of us who just, we want to journey out a little bit further, a little bit higher in our careers and our purposes. And and we want meaning to what we do. And we want to tie it together with how we make a living. And I think for those of us that are like that, we're the ones that are facing our story and addressing our experiences and growing through them and questioning a lot of things. I'm glad you mentioned that about uh, the little example there of the guy at the DMV, because, you know, your purpose doesn't have to be related to your career. That could be just something that he's doing because his purpose is elsewhere, something he's doing to take care of him and his family. His purpose might be his family. His purpose, you know, it could be, you know, so many different things. So sometimes we don't land in our careers. That's part of our purpose, you know, just because we're not getting um, compensated monetarily for that. So um, when I, when I'm uh, coaching clients, my realm is more eating psychology. Um, just, it, it kind of borders into to live coaching. So there's, I have somebody, one person in particular, that every time they call me, he says, hi, life coach. <laughs> and it's like, okay, because that's what I am to him, you know? And um, so it really uh, overflows uh, into that. But yeah, so 
it, it's that that's a good point that you made there. And what I want to do right now, I guess, from your website, um, I liked uh, your little blurb on the bottom all you have of each page. I'm, I'm referring to it right now where I know you had mentioned that this website needs to be, um, you know, really upgraded. And so I just want to tell my audience that it's, it's, I would encourage you to go to her website, beverlymarshall.com. And I'll put that link in the, in the description box, but um, you do have some good information there. And so under finding your true purpose, action steps, let's go through that a little bit okay. and maybe we can hash some things out. It says uh, first to set your intention to get clear about what it is you really want to do and feel you're meant to do. Let me first um, couch that into how I would coach clients around that with what they're coming to me with. And uh, first I ask them is, what do you want? And what are you willing to do to get that? So oftentimes people will come to me and they don't have a clear vision on what it is they actually want or what they think they want is not really what they want. Maybe they want to be a size, you know, six, you know, but what they really want is how they feel being a size six, right? Or maybe what they want is to um, eat healthier. They, they don't really know what that means, but eat healthier. Well, why? Well, because I want to be able to play with my grandkids without getting, you know, pains everywhere without being out of breath, you know? So that's the, that's the why that we try to get to. So, um, in your description here of setting your intention to get clear about what it is you really want, tell me how you perceive that and how you help your clients get to that space. Okay. So one of the first things that happens, and it's so interesting after 25 plus years of doing this a lot, <laughs> I have found it interesting that there is a series of little processes that we go through as human beings. And the first thing that happens often when I ask somebody what they want, they get a little bit fumbled up and they start telling me a list of all the things they don't want. And you probably find this to be true too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of learned, and I could probably put it on my website now, the way you find out what you really want is you start eliminating everything you don't want. Mm -hmm. And what's funny is after somebody has unloaded all the don't wants, that kind of clears a space for somebody to go, oh, wait a minute, hold it. You really want me to tell you what I want. Well, I'm kind of not sure. So in your case, if it was a client that says, well, I want to lose 60 pounds because I'm really uncomfortable or I want to lose 60 pounds, let's just say that. Then I might start poking around in there to get down to the bottom of what they really want to lose the weight for. And when I poke around in there, what I might really find is somebody who's just holding a lot of judgment for themselves the way they are. Mm -hmm. So while they might want to lose weight, what they really want to do is stop judging themselves for the weight that they are. And that's a better place to work from because that's the truth. That's the bottom of the barrel truth. Yeah. And from there, we can set an intention that what I really want to do is love myself more the way I am, quit judging myself so harshly, quit thinking that I'm not okay the way I am. And in the process of that, learning to eat better and kinder because I want to love myself more where I am. And, and in the process of that, naturally lose weight because I'm going to match up better with a thinner person when I'm thinking better about who I am. And I just, that's just kind of how the process goes and where I would explore. We don't, somebody who comes to a coaching session with me, which is, I'm not a very surface life coach. Some people would consider me to be a little bit therapeutic and deep and spiritual because I'm going to dig around and try to find a deeper place where some of those um, some of the truth of what you really want are, mm -hmm. which is really what people want in the first place, I think, but it takes time and help to get there. You know, we don't usually know some of the things that we're carrying around mm -hmm. with us when we're in those positions, but that's kind of how, that's sort of a step-by-step -step of how it would go. Not all that happens in one session, mm -hmm. one to three sessions, we can usually get pretty far. And then some of those steps on my website hold really true. Like now, now I can really set an intention of what I want. And what's the next step after that one? So the next step 
is um, what are the nudges that have been there all your life showing you a path to your greatest potential? Uh, yes, potential. So it's really my small. story's perfect. I was at the kitchen table when I was 13, 14, 15. And all the kids in the neighborhood who would come to our house, they'd land at that table with me if they wanted somebody to listen to them. Mm. And they wanted to talk about their issues. And I just landed there with them. The rest of the kids would be out in the driveway playing basketball or off in the bedroom laughing and giggling and listening to records. And I would stay at the table for the one person who wanted to talk. Uh -huh. And I never measured all that as my greatest gift mm -hmm. until as little nudges and time had gone by and I had learned, wow, that is what I'm good at. Yeah. And then one day I challenged myself to put it to work. Yeah. Um, in a more, in a more entrepreneurial way. Mm -hmm. But that yeah, took so a long time. It sometimes does. Uh, and, and, and that's where I think people need to know that sometimes it takes years to understand, you know, what your, what your purpose is and what, what works for you. And I like that, um, that question that you ask of really, it comes down to as a child, what were you drawn to? What were you, what were your skill sets naturally? Right. And I find that what I was drawn to and what I was doing or trying to do, uh, was not necessarily in the mold and that's where it wasn't, it wasn't nurtured. But I find that the things that I was interested in are exactly what gets me going now and, and what I'm funneling myself to do. So I think that's really true. That's a, that's a, good, um, a good tell. Yeah, yeah. And to be able to have someone just to talk that through, um, like what we're saying kind of is obvious um, in a way. But at the same time, when you get someone that's so maybe they're not used to um, talking about it. Maybe they're not used to just vocalizing, having it be okay to vocalize what they want and to have someone who knows how to listen, have someone know how to guide the conversation. That's extremely valuable. Little tidbits that you can give that person is just, sometimes it just yeah, takes a few things. Mm -hmm. one, one thing about that. Yeah. Is that a lot of our, a lot of people, and this is very common in our society. We are, we are taught to do what our parents guided us and showed mm -hmm. us or told us or mentored and, and uh, displayed for us to follow. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, I've had a lot of lawyers who I've sat with in coaching sessions mm -hmm. who have shared with me that the family law business needed to be handed down. And my father said that I would be a lawyer and I would carry on the business to only find out later in their 50s or so that they really were almost ill in their life because of being a lawyer and that not being what they're what they really wanted to do. So we also have those conditions that we we want to we want to honor what we think our role is as carrying on this job and this career that my family said mm -hmm. I would and should do and I thought I wanted to and did and now my gut's telling me in fact my my health is telling me that there was something else for me. But I didn't know how to listen because I was listening to another voice. Yep. And so that's common. Yes. Um, and that's just a really black and white example of lawyer versus not what I really want to do. But, you know, even go as far as, you know, I don't know, the homemaker that needs to bust out and have a career. And she really <laughs> didn't want to be the homemaker. Or vice versa. <laughs> or vice versa. So it's gotta... just getting out of the stereotypes Listen. and getting out of the routines that we got into with our families telling us what we should do. And, and then teaching people that they have an inner voice and that it's been speaking mm -hmm. to you, that you've been too busy in this yeah. crazy world to hear it. Yeah. That's probably the very best part about coaching is helping to listen to what people's inner voice is telling them and trying to see it in the, story that they're telling me when they're sitting at my table and uh and then just trying to get just little nuggets out of that and feed back to them people get very overwhelmed with uh thankfulness and very happy mm -hmm. to hear that their inner voice has always been there that their soul is speaking up but they just didn't know how to listen yeah 
And yep. that's a really neat part of coaching in for me in my coaching practice. Yep. And the trusting of that voice, the trusting of self. Um, I talked about that in a podcast with Carolyn King. She is also a life coach. I don't, I've done two podcasts with her. I think it was my deprogramming series, um, standing in your truth that we talked about uh, that very thing. And it's difficult to learn how to trust that inner voice because we're so deprogrammed out of that. We're indoctrinated to just listen to the teacher, listen to the, to our, please kids, listen to your parents, of course. But um, when it comes to um, parental child relationship, the parents should be trying to discover what the child's purpose is, what, what their skill sets are. And oftentimes it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen at all in today's, um, well, ever probably, but yeah. So I find a lot of clients when they come to me, they don't trust their, their inner instinctual uh, patterns and it's certainly something that I'm sure you um, have also uh, honed in on and I have become a lot better at uh, listening and trusting yeah. my own intuition but the, especially the last couple years with uh, everything going on but um, and it's it, it becomes uh, it comes really fun uh, when you're able to just kind of listen and then, and then you have a, a, a trust and then you get excited about, oh, wow, like this, I wonder what this is going to do. I wonder what this day is going to bring, right? Because uh, it's kind of a new skill that you have. So your next point is ask yourself, am I willing to say yes to my true purpose and make a decision to go after it? Talk about that. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you a tiny quick blurb of my, okay. how I came into my entrepreneurial uh, position. And that is, I had to do that. Oh, did I ever have to do that? I was in the middle at 40, about 40 years old, and I'm 63 now. I was in the middle of a last attempt to go get my social work degree completed. I tell people I have the longest college history of anybody on the planet. <laughs> I went to school off and on for about 30 years. Wow. And never completed all the way the bachelor's degree. I'm close, though. I'm only a few credits away. But I'll never go back now because I don't need it. And it's not what I want. But mm -hmm. I'm, doing the, I'm doing the college. And in the middle of a, of a course, and we were taking an exam, I had an epiphany. And it's like my whole world swirled around in, my, in me. I saw my whole life pass by me in seconds. And I thought, I stood up in the middle of a classroom, about 145 students taking this exam. The instructor looked at me like, what's wrong with her? And I thought, I'm not supposed to be here. I had, I was in my 40s. I had two part-time jobs that paid around 7 or $8 an hour to, to get by while I'm in college, taking out loans and grants and everything to pay for this college degree. Because I had always been told that I should be a social worker. I'm so good at what I do. And I had had a lot of jobs in the field. So I got up and I walked out. I walked past the counselor's office and I said, I'm going home. I'm not coming back. Send me my loan stuff in six months. This isn't for me. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm out of here. <laughs> and I went home. I went to my apartment. I had eight hundred dollars in my in my checking account, and my rent was eight hundred dollars. And I thought, well, I got about two weeks left in the apartment. What am I going to do? And I went, um, well, I'll give up the apartment, keep the eight hundred dollars. So I did that, and then I packed up everything and gave stuff away. And I'm sitting there. I have a few days left. And I thought, oh, my God, what have I done? Talk about stepping out and trusting yeah. and, and claiming that you are going to do. You're going to listen. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, well, the only thing I know how to do is I'm just, one time I had a book fall off a shelf. And when I picked it up, it ended up leading me to 10 years of spiritual practice and this really neat program and doing all these fun groups. And it taught me a lot about my career. So I thought, well, I better go to a bookstore and just sit there. Maybe a book will fall for me. <laughs> so I listened to that. 
and I went and sat at a bookstore and I'm at a round table and I'm just sitting there watching the bookshelves. And all of a sudden, a lady came in the front door. She walked in the front door. She walked over and sat directly in front of me at this round table in a chair. And she started talking as if it was a client scheduled appointment. She goes, I am so glad you're here. I need to talk about my job and, and this and about him and this and that and this guy and this and that. And I was just chuckling under my breath, thinking, this is what I'm supposed to do oh. is be a coach for people who need to talk something out and find their way. Yeah. And in the process of that hour session, not only did she work her problems out, but her problem was is that her house sitter had reneged on watching her house while she goes to New Zealand for seven months, and she needed somebody to watch her house. That's incredible. And I went, oh, good grief. Uh, I said, I know we don't know each other really well. She was an instructor at college. But if you trust me and would like, I could do that for you because I'm in transition. Uh -huh. And she goes, oh. Well, come over tonight. It's yours. Oh, good grief. So I guess what I'm getting at is that when you really put it out there and you really uh, want to trust that you're heading in a direction that is what your soul's purpose, what your higher purpose, what you really want to do, that the universe is here to help. Get clear about that and start mm -hmm. listening. And if you're brave enough, act on it. Now, I would never tell one of my clients to stop their day job course until they know where they're going mm -hmm. i kind of was a little bit over brave mm -hmm. i stopped all of my stuff mm -hmm. but it worked out for me and and it was what i was meant to do and in the process of being at her house i ended up putting together my new business and it formulated itself in the next three months and by the time that i got to the end of the six or seven months of her getting ready to come home i had started a coaching business I had a few clients. I have started developing some opportunities with some contracts coming my way. And I had found a small apartment to move to so, in that seven month time. And I took care of her dogs and took care of her house. So let me just back up for a second. So you just met this woman and she needed a house sitter for that long, six or seven months. And so you, were you paid for this too? No, no. Okay, I, okay. I didn't get paid. I took care of her house, but yeah. I had a place to be. Yes, of course. In of course. transition. It was wow. perfect. Wow. That's crazy. crazy I have had. Good. Yes. I, I, I have had definitely those same, not that, but uh, similar. You know, when you. So I, I also don't encourage anyone to take, you know, big risks because here, here's the thing. Take risks. Yes. But um, they need to be calculated. Because if the risk is in line with what you're supposed to do, supposed to, in quotes, your purpose, your whatever it is you need to do, then yes, I think you can take that jump off the cliff and you are going to be caught somehow. Now, yes, I've, if you are definite, definite enough right. in your desire, if you are clear enough that you are willing to jump forward and you're definite in your desire and you're trusting the universe that support is there. And for me, I had no children, husband, animals. I had nothing of great that would uh, have been disturbed too much. I could take a risk like that. Certainly while I was raising children and or married, those are the years and the times in my life that I couldn't have ever jumped off the side of the cliff like that, expecting to fly. Right. Um, but a lot of things happened. I gave up the idea that I had to be a social worker and go to school and get a degree. That was not my truest and highest thing anymore. So I had done a lot of the things that are on that list right there and, and managed to come through. Now, listen, don't think that that was, I had a big smile on my face the whole time that I'm moving to her house and trying to find my way, take care of her dogs. I cried a lot. Like, what am I doing? Oh my God. You know? But I, because I'm an emotional human being and I am going to go through that process and I didn't have a life coach, but I am one now for people who go through that. 
And again, our life experiences are constantly helping us to be available for what people need from us in our careers, I believe. So, right. I agree. You know, so, yeah, I was just okay. going to mention um, with, with that, I was going to mention that if it's not something that you should be doing, need to be doing your purpose, then I don't necessarily uh, would suggest that person make that, take that big risk because I've done that. I've done that. Too. I've done right. Yeah. I've done that too. And I've fallen on my face. And so, that's where we go back to listening to that inner voice. Is that inner voice coming from a place where this is the way you should go? Or is that inner voice not really the inner voice? It's something else. It's programming yes. or it's a mistaken something. So that's really important. I want people to understand that. And also the courage mm -hmm. part. So when you do jump off that cliff, like you mentioned, you, I've cried so many times during <laughs> during periods where I knew I was doing what I should be doing and I knew it was an answer to what I needed. And man, it was hard. It was super hard. And, but that's part of it. That's part of it. It's not going to be easy just because it's, you found your purpose in, in this next step you're supposed to take. So it takes courage and it takes the ability to keep going because you know, this is where you should be and what you should be doing. Yes. It does. It really does. And I was 40 when I made that shift. Mm -hmm. In my 20s, I didn't have all those things worked out yet. And I was still on the journey. So, you know, it takes time. And this is, this is just the advanced portion of where I was. I mean, if I was to go back right. to the lines in my 20s, I would be able to say I was so brave. And I wouldn't, mm -hmm. you know. And it could, if it would have gone a different way, let's say I took the house and I get over there, or let's say that I go to the bookstore and I'm sitting at the table and the lady doesn't come in and no book falls and I'm there all day, then I would have known, okay, look, go, go get a job. Right. You're a good worker. You've got a nice resume, get a job until you're more clear what to do next. So, you know, it just was my time to jump off the side of the cliff and fly. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I uh, touched water a few times before I got off the ground in my flight. So. <laughs> so the last point on your website is make a firm, if we've kind of been talking about this, make a firm decision to go for it mm -hmm. and then plan to start letting go of what you don't want. This is so important. So you can make room for your true purpose to show up mm -hmm. and look out as the doors open up and you're flooded with opportunity. So that point about letting go of what you don't want, I am a firm believer of making space for something new. There has to be a void. If you're gonna just hoard all of the, 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 the patterns that you already have in place and all of the things that you already have in place that you've put there for one reason or another, and you're not gonna make space, have a void, then, nothing's going to be able to inflow and mm -hmm. it's scary. I think that's one of the scariest parts is to let something go. That is for me, that is the most scary because now you're vulnerable mm -hmm. and you don't necessarily have something to replace it with. But I think that's the way the universe kind of works. It's kind of like yeah. somebody that is in a relationship, you know, and, and wants to, you know, a different boyfriend or girlfriend you know, you don't wait till you meet that person and break up with this person. You know, that's, you know, you have to, you know, ha have a void there, be vulnerable, and then know that the universe is going to provide what you need. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And work towards that. You mm -hmm. know, then it's, then it's time to not just sit back and say, okay, you know, give me what I'm, what I'm asking for, but be clear about what you want in that void. And then do the work, whatever that work means. Being open is one thing, but doing the work. Sometimes it takes going to school. If you want this certain career, you got to go to school. Well, I'm going to give you another little example of letting go of the things you don't want. So this is tricky. And it's easy when it's clothes in the closet. And I hate to say this, but a boyfriend. Uh -huh. Because that's a clearer thing. Clean out the closet, get rid of everything, new things will come. This boyfriend and I have been off and on. We're not doing well. 
So let's break that off and let me open my energy for what's right. But there's a lot of places where it's not clear. And for I'm going to give a small story because it tells it. I had an employee come to work for me, and it was uh, soon after my business took off, I needed a, a help. And I was really, really busy. I had a, a, an office manager running things. It was busy time. And this woman really wanted to work for me. She gave me every reason why she was a perfect fit, and I heard all of that. I was willing to train her, blah, blah, blah. I hired her and she came to work for me and I would train her a little bit. We had all these clients that we were servicing through some contracts and doing coaching with. She would come to work and she had, and she really needed the money too. And I paid really well. She had so many volunteer projects in the community that she was doing that she had no time to come to work for me. And so my first job with her, and it took about three weeks to break her down. And I had to threaten to fire her already because she didn't want to give up all these volunteer hours for the drama class and the foster kids and the this program and that program. And when I finally figured out what the problem was and why she could never show up on time, put in very many hours and be available to learn what our process was, I finally figured out what the problem was. I identified it. I shared it with her. And I taught her, I said, look, if you want to be a good coach, you've got to have your time freed up and be available for one. And you're lucky you get to work for me and get clients given to you so you can get some income right away. But you're going to have to let go of these things that don't serve you anymore. And what you have to learn about is billing, being, billing your time. You can't give it all away. If you want to give some away, bill yourself for five hours in the day, and the rest is yours to do with if you want. So I had to identify the problem, help show her what the things were that she had to let go of, if she wanted to, and then show her how to manage so she could still be a, a giver and, and do service, but be a good coach and get paid for her time. She would have never let all those free things go that she was doing because she thought she was being of service. And when we untangled that, she became a great coach for me, still works for me. She's been with me about 10 years and her life completely changed wow. during that. And she still does a lot of service and gives. So, yeah, I was going to say there, there was something that she was uh, receiving from that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's good that she's in a place now where she wants to be because when somebody's giving of themselves, you know, it, it's it's altruistic. It's it's um, it's a great thing. However, sometimes people just keep giving of themselves out of because that's from a non-healthy place, right? So sometimes that has to be worked through too. Um, you know. Having a coach to help identify these things and just redefine them and and reword it and redistribute how she wanted to be a giver and yet still an earner mm -hmm. and be a coach and um, change her life in this way. I mean, this is where coaching is so helpful. I really wish I do work with employers and I do work, um, put people to work in some of my contract positions after we've done all these coaching and you know employers are always so thankful when we help somebody find where they best fit in a store in a in a company find out what are the barriers to keeping them being a great worker you know just like what I was able to discover with her how she could be a great coach and continue to work for me and be successful this coaching aspect of being able to help people untangle some things, figure out what they really want, you know, mm -hmm. and then start uh, holding the intention for that, clearing up some of those old habits and getting redirected in what's right for us. I mean, that is the ultimate with coaching, I think. Yeah. it's. I think coaches are very good for these kinds of areas of our life, you know. It's kind of getting centered. When I have someone, uh, usually it's, I work with a lot of women, mostly women, uh, middle-aged women usually. 
And many times it's the person that's coming to me wanting to make a change for their own health. Uh, and they're giving to everybody else, especially their family, that these women don't give themselves the kind of time that they need to, to give, even just to their own diets. And so I help them to carve out those moments where, because sometimes just getting a tip of, of how to do something a different way uh, is, is all that a person needs. But to see the value in, wait a minute, you're doing all of these things for everybody else. You're cooking meals for, for your family, um, but this is not best for you. So to give them permission to make themselves a, a separate meal or to take some time in the morning so they could do what they need to do to get out and walk for 10 minutes or to make that smoothie, to give them permission to do that. Uh, so many women are in that space. And, and that's so helpful what you do for others. Yes. Likewise, likewise. And so it's, it's giving that person permission to take care of themselves. Put that mask on yourself first. Otherwise, there's not a whole lot. Uh, you, you're going to give so much that what's going to happen when you drop, you know? And yeah. um, I, I, I've told, I, I've worked with this. I won't say who she is. <laughs> She's very close to me, but I've told her for years, it's not selfish. Take care of yourself. It's not selfish. You are actually making yourself more fortified so that you have more to give, right? And so I take care of myself, girlfriend. I take care of myself because, <laughs> because I know I'm not worth much if I don't take care of myself and I'm not willing to drive myself into the ground, you know? So that was your last step um, there in helping someone to find purpose. Um, is there anything else you I want to I haven't read my steps in a while. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Bringing them up. You know, I, as you said that my website's a little, it's a little old and it needs updating, but you know, what's good, the though. cool thing about that? There is some parts about it that are timeless, but what is so cool about it is I have been so busy coaching yeah. and I have been so active in my career and my work. I have a few couple girls that work for me. Um, we have a ton of clients. We, we've got a lot of really great things going on. I used to do workshops and some speaking thing. I don't have time. I'm really busy and I love what I do. But I have been so busy that I haven't done all that. And that's a great reason to not have that time to do it. Although <laughs> I do want to do it. And I am making some changes um, in my career right now. So you know, I'm, I'm looking at maybe it's time for an updo, I guess is what I want to say. I'm in the same boat. I'm so busy doing projects that to try to tend to my website, which also is somewhat outdated, uh, to try to tend to any of that stuff is mm -hmm. just, it's just not possible. But, but I know you, like, you're not, you're not for hiring right now. You're, you're, you're not taking on personal clients right now, mm -hmm. other than what I am actually, you are now. Okay. That is one of the changes I've decided to, oh. uh, I've actually am selling uh, a piece of my business, half of it. Oh. Um, and I'm going to open that half up for, uh, to take on more private work. I feel like my private work, uh, the part that is not part of these contracts is where I have lacked being able to have the time. Mm -hmm. And I feel like what's going on in our world is such a crisis for some. And I thought I would offer more private opportunities and maybe s formulate some small groups and um, be more available for the changing times and helping people work through the fear mm -hmm. and um, make the changes that are necessary to go through when it's just a more difficult time. You never, mm -hmm. people aren't even with the same employer anymore. They're moved. It's just a different time. It's a different time. And, um, yeah. I want to make it affordable mm -hmm. for people who are losing their jobs and this kind of thing and uh, just open this door up now. So that is a big change for me. I'm very excited yeah. about it. Yeah. And it's positive. I actually uh, made an agreement, a deal today and sold half oh, my company. 
Wow. That's but it's a great day for you yeah. to be interviewing me because Congratulations. I just, <laughs> we just made an agreement today that is super fair. And the person who's buying it has worked for me for almost 10 years and she's right. super excited about it. Oh, good. She's, it's the perfect, it's okay. a perfect deal. And, you know, again, one more time in my life that I have said, okay, I'm willing to make these changes and I trust the universe is going to support me. If it's the right avenue for me, mm -hmm. I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to set my intention. I'm going to begin to create. I'm going to open this door. And if this isn't where I'm supposed to be, I'll know. But so far, I'm getting a lot of big, huge yeses and things working out. And um, the the website will probably be redone soon. And I'll put myself out there more right. and start advertising. I've never advertised in 20 years. Mm -hmm. for private clients. And um, so I expect to be busy. Well, that's great news. When I, when we spoke the last time, which I think was two weeks ago on the phone, I know you had mentioned uh, wanting to get more into the private sector. And um, I was hoping you were going to, you were going to do that. So that's, I first I've heard of it um, that that was done. So I'm yeah. very happy for you. I would love to collaborate with you. I know we did speak about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll help you with some of the, the tech stuff that I know, which is not much, but uh, okay. I'm, I'm a few steps ahead of you anyway, yes, <laughs> and you're a few sure. steps ahead of me in some I'd things love too. That. So. And I'm going to offer, I'm going to put it out there that uh, there are some workshops that um, could really be helpful in the coming up in the future for, for people mm -hmm. who, who want to take a weekend and unwind, make some changes, relax, and rejuvenate and uh, leave with some new ideas. Yep. So, a lot of that's yeah. being done. A lot of the workshops now are being done virtually. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people don't, can't travel, don't want to, or, you know, so that's definitely something that um, could be successful, you know? Yes. So I agree. Uh, awesome. Well, that's good to know. So yeah. your contact yeah. information um, is I'll put it in the description box, but so right now, um, how would people know if you, how would they get a hold of you? Are you taking any kind of, um, phone calls or? Yes, you could. So the best way to get a hold of me would probably be through my email support okay. at beverlymarshall.com. I am on Facebook. Uh, I believe that that's under Bev's heart okay. at SVC global. Okay. Um, do you have on your website, do you have those links? I believe they're there, Terry, but I would be working on that. So right now, the best way is support at beverlymarshall.com. And the phone number I would give you would be the office number, which is 775-337-0685. And I believe that's on my website. Okay. Um, so right now, that's ideal. And then as I have somebody ready to start the process of setting up some face pages and different things for me, um, that's all coming uh, right away. Awesome. But yeah, and I'd be happy to uh, take phone calls or an email, and mm -hmm. then I'll pass on my cell phone at that time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and hashing some of this out. I really appreciate your insights, all of your experience. Uh, I know my audience is going to enjoy that too. And maybe in the future, we can have another discussion. Uh, we can great. continue the collaboration. So hang on with me. I'm going to um, say goodbye to my audience, but you can hang on thank with me. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You are very welcome. Thank you for watching. This is Terry Lynn with Live True.